This program is, is unique. It's the only one of its kind in the country. We have families come from all over the world to attend the program, given the fact that they can integrate their care, family and child involved for two weeks, and find some notable improvement in their overall functioning at the end of those two weeks. You want to begin with something positive. And as I talked about uh, day one, dropping those positive endorsements in, giving them praise. And we cannot commend the, these families enough for making it to camp, for we understand it's a huge time commitment. And based on the severity of the patient's symptoms and um, their needs at that time, you know, some patients and families are able to postpone and put off coming to camp until summer. Give the positive, then describe what is happening that is causing difficulties. I want you to express your feelings as a result of what's happening and then admit your contribution to that problem. But in other cases where it might be a life or death situation um, and patients need this participation in camp now, um, it's wonderful to see that families are able to commit and make that happen. We're gonna look at depression from a bit more um, of a layered perspective. Kids being here with their parents um, being able to understand the symptoms of depression, not just from the kid's own internal experience, the impact that it has on their mood. I want you to write as many triggers, switches, as you can. Parents being able to understand the impact that it has on the kid's bodies, um, on their behavior. The complexities of this disease are attended to from six or seven different um, subspecialty perspectives which is within the program. Psychology, clinical social work, um, clinical nurse practitioner, dietitian, uh, occupational therapy, recreational therapy. It's hard to manage your depression if you're not aware. So this one is about being aware. All right all looking at the dynamics of the symptoms of depression and the impact on the patient and their family from those perspectives. And it helps the kids and the families to know just how complex a disease this is. Recreation therapy as part of the CAMP program provides opportunities uh, in the areas of team building, socialization, creativity, leisure skills, and leisure education as a way for teens and parents to learn about using leisure to promote wellness. Throughout the two weeks, teens participate in a variety of activities that help them to increase their self-esteem and self-confidence, learn about using creativity to express emotions, to make connections with each other, to socialize in a positive, healthy environment. The families play a part in, in the recreation therapy program as well. Families get to come up to recreation therapy once a week and participate in a leisure activity with their family as, and as part of the group. And then they can take that outside of camp as well and learning about how to use leisure outside of camp as a way to get a break from some of the intensity and some of the overwhelming things that they're dealing with and as a way to just reconnect with each other in a more positive way. When we're feeling a lot of stress or feeling overwhelmed, we tend to focus a lot on problems and we can pay a lot of attention to the things that are going wrong in our life. So first of all, I just want you to pick up your grades. Through mindfulness, we can learn to step back from um, those, that cycle of thoughts and emotions and to stay calm and to stay present and to appreciate what's happening in our life at this moment. And that can really help us to stay calmer and to problem solve more effectively and also to just enjoy our life more. Kind of maybe look them over, notice what you can notice. A regular mindfulness practice also seems to um, lead us to be more compassionate both towards ourselves and toward other people. And for families who are dealing with mood disorders and depression and trying to support one another, that can really be helpful. If we pay attention on purpose to the things that we can be grateful for, then that improves our quality of life. This is a team approach. You're not on an island, I'm not on an island. We're gonna do this together. Don't feel alone in this. Teens, you fill in five coping resources you can utilize to improve your mood and keep you safe and write out people you could reach out to and talk to during those times to keep you safe. Parents, you'll fill in five potential coping strategies or resources you think your child could use. Once you've agreed on these five coping strategies on each page, write them on one side of the card and then write the call list on the other side of the card. If you are struggling with 
a thought of hurting yourself, um, to the point that you're contemplating engaging in that behavior, you need to reach out to an adult who will know how emotionally and in a mature way to help you and respond in a way to help keep you safe. Put these in a place like a wallet, a purse, somewhere where they're always accessible. Um, and write this information on here. And again, write it on all three of the cards so there's at least three family members who have this same information. So I don't ever want you to think that this is miserable nutrition from the diet police. This is just healthy eating. A little less junk. How do you guys do with fruits and vegetables? I think they do look, overlook the importance, you know, and again, if you aren't suffering from any sort of illness and you do have a pretty poor diet, you might be okay and you might think that you're fine. Something that I would focus on then is what does the rest of your life look like if you continue to eat unhealthfully, again, not perfect, but most unhealthfully, is something going to develop later on? We can talk about risk of cancer. We can talk about risk of heart disease. Um, we can talk about probably any system in your body, and I promise you it relates back to basic healthy nutrition. It really comes down to balance and kind of how you feel best. Can I go from breakfast to lunch without having a snack? How do I feel? Am I hungry? Am I mad? Am I miserable? And if you want a snack, have a snack. And does that snack help you get to lunch, maybe make healthier choices at lunch? It's about communicating that message to you that I care about you, but also telling myself, hey, I'm not the only person that matters here. There are other people that are involved and I need to make sure I'm respecting them as well. So what we're doing is we're role playing scenarios where one person has to just read the card. It's a kind of a conflictual conversation. In a way, it is like a graduate course in parenting. Parents are often surprised by the amount of content that is directed towards them and their skills as a parent. So many parents come into the program feeling frustrated and out of the loop with the experiences their child has had before in other treatment modalities. And the other person will then fill in the blanks, acknowledging how that person feels, and then stating their own I feel statement. And we've worked really hard over the last three years to fill in the gaps in our content to fill that need and provide the parents with the skills that they're craving for so that they can support their child. With the ultimate goal of reducing conflict, trying to be open for negotiating and building trust within that relationship. Occupational therapy uses time management, life balance, coping skills, and social skills to ensure that the team can manage their mood and follow through with the concepts after the program. I want you to write, this weekend I will try to avoid at least come up with two things you're going to try to avoid. It could be a time waster, like I'm going to try to avoid overdoing on the Netflix. Or it could be I will try to avoid speaking before I think, or I will try to avoid letting stress control my behavior, I will try to avoid screaming at my mom, whatever it is. Our goal is that they can act according to a plan instead of how they feel so that they can be accomplishing their goals successfully. <laughs> okay, so I want you to do everything in your power this weekend to make that word happen. Okay? Act according to the plan that you have made, not how you feel. And if all else fails, just take a couple deep breaths. The morning stretch is a great part of our program uh, with lots of benefits. One of the benefits is that it's a great way to start the day. It's Friday. Uh, all the families come together in a group and we go through a gentle range of motion throughout the whole body. All right, we'll look up. Which wakes you up and prepares you for the lessons of the day. All right, we'll do some shoulder shrugs. Another benefit is that it's a powerful lesson that the family members send to each other. All right. Remember the goalpost, claw. They're saying, I'm here with you, I'm doing this with you, and I'm dedicated to learning and changing and growing with you. Breathe in, squeeze your shoulder blades together. The last benefit of stretch is that it's a hands-on approach for the behavioral activation theme of our program. Let's do our side stretch. You're gonna reach, reach, reach up. When you do something healthy, for your body, it will positively influence your thoughts and your feelings. So it's a very powerful exercise. Stretch out the side of those legs. And this is a family-focused model of care, and your care going forward needs to be family-focused. You need to commit to each other. And this certificate is just another reminder of all the hard work you did. Now that's not the end of the story. That's really just the start of it. 
They have a lot of ground ahead of them. They will work to implement these skills um, as they return home, uh, get reconnected with their local providers for ongoing therapy and medication management. This symbolizes your work as a family, not the teen's work, not the parent's work. As a family, you guys have come together through tough times and made this happen. What we understand about this program is it helps the teens and children and their families be better prepared to manage the illness and recognize ways to, to keep ongoing care uh, available for them in a successful way. Nice work. Again, team effort. This could not have accomplished, been accomplished without all of you engaging in it and being motivated and being willing to do it. Now just get out of bed every day and keep doing this stuff.